And we're back with question one review. Yay! Quiet, Dar. Listen up. Changing kindergarten question one synthesis essentially is going to give you six sources. And of those six sources, they're going to want you to write on how many of them? Three. Three. Strive for, well, you're striving for five in this exam. But with the six sources, three you really need to write on. So you need to take a stance. And with synthesis similar to FSA, FAST, et cetera, you've already been doing this, you need to read through them very quickly. They allocate extra time on this. Each essay you have, of the three essays, 40 minutes. They give you an extra 15 minutes to work through this one. That 15 minutes you really should spend 10, I would say, because you can fly through and not read the entire document and kind of get it a, a, a general feel for what it's asking for, what it's doing. And that way you can, if you can't understand it, skip, go to only the three sources that you do understand. So what we're trying to do in this is develop a side. When you respond to the prompt, the thesis has to have an actual position and then you have to give a reason. Part one, take the stance, which I'm gonna show you. Part two, give one to two reasons. And then when you get to the actual outline, which we'll get to in a second, um, it'll walk you through sequencing how to go about it. So when it comes to this, They'll give you this, they'll give you the sources, it's gonna look exactly like that. And essentially, um, when you're reading through it, it's always gonna have the actual prompt give you the blueprint for the thesis. And remember, the thesis is a one or a zero, it's pass fail. Statistically, your chances of passing are way, way higher if you can just nail that. So let's do this one together. I know we did it already, but uh, for those listening to the 100K followers, You have to basically come up with a position. Kindergarten should be transformed into a more academic environment than it has been in the past. To what extent? Now, some people write this in two ways. To what extent should it be transformed to be more academic? Some will argue that kindergarten should be, this is an example, some would argue that kindergarten should be more academic because it's not just about socializing young students, but it's also about getting them ready to hit reading levels by kindergarten and first grade and second grade, okay, perfect. Others are gonna say no, kindergarten should be more about developing social skills, you know, emotional intelligence for, for you so that their behavior increases and then pepper in academics. You can have kind of a back and forth, which Ricky, I know we talked a little bit about, or you can just take one hard stance, that's fine as well. That would be an example of a thesis. Your stance is, you know, yes, it should be more academic, stance, A. Eh? No, it should be, it should not be more academic, B. Then give a reason as to why. If you're struggling to find the reasons, I would just skip right to some of the sources and be like, okay, this source, you know, basically it's saying that um, a kindergarten originally, you know, with the German philosopher, a school teacher was delineating on the fact that he thought it was literally, you know, a child's garden, a place to fill with plants and flowers and nurture children's curiosity. That's important. It was not meant to be a functional classroom. And then if you read through some of this and you're like, wait, I think this is what he's arguing. Your first body paragraph and example is gonna make an allusion to this. You would say according to the source or say the name according to name. Always use last names when you refer to them after you've stated the first and last name. Never the first name. They're not your friends. They're not people you know. So you would say, you know, after you say, like let's say it's, you know, name, name, always go to the last name and then say, the child's garden is meant to build curiosity and it should be used with stuff that's hands-on, like arts and crafts, uh, hands-on Legos, hands-on Minecraft, things that can actually be used to stimulate the imagination and get kids to start thinking about things outside of the box rather than just one plus one. So that, you can do a hodgepodge between, but really, of your three body paragraphs, three sources, they're gonna look and count. Did you refer source A, source B, source C? That's good that you did. Always use short, concise quotes, but the most important thing is that you get the sophistication points, okay? One out of one for thesis, one to four scale for your body paragraphs for analysis. The last one's a bonus, and that bonus is the sophistication. So if I were to read this, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, there, by the latest trend in kindergarten education, a trend that's turning kindergartens away from the roots and into many or trickle down first grades in these classrooms, five-year-olds are writing sentences, identifying um, phone uh, phonetic uh, sounds, making books, they're, they're learning like state capitals. This is academic, right? 
uh, when you read through this, the author of uh, Teacher Magazine on the subject suggests for this reason for the trend. Parents whose children have long been in daycare and preschool often perceive a half day centered around play as a step backward. They want beginning reading and writing, not more play. Other experts think that the schools are stressing academics in kindergarten in response to a public demand for higher standardized tests, the fallout. And then you see this, and it's, well, there's a note here that this push for early academics, we are beginning to hear about kindergartners who are deficient, negative, deficient, um, in various abilities or slow learners, when in fact, they may be well within their appropriate developmental stage. Parents who do not want to see their children unfairly labeled may now be waiting until their kids are six to enroll them in kindergarten. And then it goes on to talk, and they name drop, and you can use these names. But she believes that these parents are acting in their best interest of their children. But she says, this practice is changing the balance in many kindergarten programs and actually perpetuating the trend toward academics. That, you can pull out some information, take a phrase, take a phrase, but make it so it's not that you're paraphrasing and summarizing because you're going to get a one or two out of four in the analysis, and make it more, here's what they say, and then add your thought on the matter. Pretend like it's me giving you this article and asking you, what do you think about this? Isn't that a better mentality? Because then in your body paragraph, you take it, the quote, you take the idea, and then you're taking it a step further, and you're saying, you know, well, that's true, actually, because what's going to happen is if we do push this, then kids are going to be at grade level because they're getting early exposure to these academics, and they're learning, and they're going to come into first and second and third grade when the tests that actually matter, they'll be prepared for it, and they'll be able to do well on the state assessments, while also bolstering the emotional intelligence and socialization of these students in the fun and play time. Or some people argue, why don't we blend the two and make academics for that level fun? Make, make games out of it, make little competitions out of it with stickers, rewards, snacks, prizes, uh, incentives. That could be important. There's an interesting blend of those two things. Each body paragraph has to refer to one source, source A, source B, source C, and what's the last thing I'm, I'm forgetting? You have to include something that goes against the counter argument. That doesn't have to be a whole paragraph. It can be a whole paragraph. It's up to you. You only need to state it once. It can go in the third body. Um, if you want, that tends to be the trend, really, with students. That's what they normally do. They'll have the counter argument. They'll include it toward the end. But make sure when you state, here's the other viewpoint on the matter, still you should invalidate it and say, while that is their perspective and point, it doesn't hold enough weight or it's not as valid as this argument because, and give a reason as to it, then your conclusion, like all of them, for all question one, two, and three, can be a very short, concise, three-sentence wrap-up as to why, don't restate the thesis. It should just be a, a, a send-off with something new. Scroll to a source and take a line or two and put like your own spin on that and just say, you know, given the reasons, and explanations or delineations previously stated from the three sources. Kindergarten should, in fact, be more academic because, and give one final last reason, that's it. You're done. And strive for the five. Cool? Out.